for final three rounds and final two rounds for the ladies. It's time to start the round. So okay, uh, I believe we once again. No, no, I, th I thought it will be one more time. And that's in it has begun with the Sicilian. Sicilian and Rosalima well. variation with Bishop B5, E6 was played by Vasily Ivanchuk. G7, G6 is sort of a trend nowadays, but Ivanchuk goes for E6 and Knight E7, which sort of surprised Magnus Carlsen immediately. He starts to spend time. D4, 94. Well, look how fast Ivanchuk is playing. And B6 is something I can't recall seeing in this position. I mean, even though the, the move is perfectly healthy. B6, bishop to B7, and. But you're what not can the only one who is puzzled. Look at Magnus so Magnus already using Magnus half a minute. Sort of, yeah, because indeed, I mean, first of all, it doesn't look like a very good move to play. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. not. But on the other hand, it perfectly makes sense. So Magnus took on c6 and played knight c3. Bishop b7, I assume. Vasily, why didn't you? Uh, why did you play b6 to play bishop b7? So play it. Or maybe he wants to develop the other bishop first, like bishop e7, in order to be in time to castle. Queen c7, which is somewhat puzzling to me, because perhaps to prevent bishop f4, but I don't know if, if it's uh, such a br uh, bright idea. Queen g4 played, and Vasily goes for h5, chasing the queen away. Obviously, queen g4 was played with the idea to go bishop f4. Queen g5, an original position for the queen in this. It's a very ori yeah, original but, position already. It's uh... Yeah, uh, but usually you have black queen on d8 and queen g5 is never an idea. Mm -hmm. Knight e5 this time. So what's, uh, what's after bishop f4 would be my question. Bishop f4, this is the move uh, Magnus plays. Look, look what happens. f6 and queen g6 check. <laughs> what a position! Queen g6. Yeah, so you can exchange check. queens you can by taking take on it. g6, but Magnus is usually fine with all those endings. Uh, but Vasily it's taken. Takes takes Because what else a6. could you do? Move the king was really. Yeah, a6 chasing the bishop away, but now your b6 pawn is hanging. If you go b5, he goes b5. Then a4 is always in the air. Look, I'm thinking of uh, of an interesting idea. Yes, a4 before and knight b5. Will he play knight b5? Not really. No, knight b1. Of course, it's very easy to sacrifice pieces with when you're not playing the game. But just talking. Knight b5, though, was an interesting idea because uh, a black knight was far away. Okay, forget it. <laughs> Rook a7. Bishop a5. So bishop has no moves at all, but will be... Uh, well, it pressurizes the, the b4 pawn. Knight e5 now. Knight will go to c6 later on. Knight b3, bishop back to e7. There is nothing wrong with it. I kind of like Ivanchuk. Ah, there is something wrong with it. Bishop b6 and a5. But I still sort of like Ivanchuk's position. Maybe not for... Bishop e2 was played to keep the bishop. Bishop e2, yeah. So he decided to keep the bishop. Vasily had a chance, though, to take on... G5, look at that. G5 to stop f4. That, that's a logical one. So he grabs yes, some you space. Yes, keep the e5 spot for the yeah. knight. As long as knight is on e5, black can't be too bad. Bishop to b7, then bishop to c6 later on f3 in some positions. against the b7 bishop and strengthening the pawn, of course. Rook to c8. Uh-huh. So a pressure on c2 applied. Rook d2. It's such a typical Sicilian position, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So, h4, I mean, if you don't have, okay, king f7 looks like a useful move and probably is a useful move. Rook c6, trying to, well, perhaps provoke a5 so that there will be no knight a5. Magnus decides otherwise. He, so he plays bishop e3. Option. Right, he plays bishop e3 and he wants to play a f knight a5 right now, basically. Right now, on the next move. Bishop d8, 
doesn't look like a healthy move. You can play it. Play Bishop C8. Bishop C8. Which is sort of weird, to be honest, because one more time. Knight A5. Does Knight A5 win an exchange? Or there is a tactical point? No, King F1. Knight A5, Bishop C5. Those little intermediate moves. <laughs> and that's why King F1. Now that's Knight why A5 King F1. is a threat. So, yeah, somehow when you see the move of Magnus Kass, King F1, you understand there was something with Knight A5, something connected with the check to this king, and then you realize the it's Bishop The question is, will Chuki see it? Bishop Yes, he Bishop sees D8. it, of yes. course, Bishop no, no, D8. No. Of course he was prepared. I mean, that's why the Bishop mm -hmm. C8 was kind of a little, you know, little Just trap. Just a move in his yeah, little whole trap. strategy. Okay, A5. Now Bishop can... Ah, now Bishop cannot go back to B7 because Knight C5. So first bishop e7, controlling c5, and after knight d4, where to go with the no, bishop b6 and knight d4. Bishop b6, though, black has bishop b7, and now knight c4. Somehow attacking the rook. Ah, that's that's the thing. Knight d4. I still like Ivanchuk's position, to be honest. Now a6 is no longer hanging. I mean, basically he's. He's with two bishops, and I don't see uh, why White has to be happy about it. If he could quickly place his king on f7, bishop on b7, yeah, bishop play b7. d5, then he would Freud. be very much fine. He might be better already, king f7, then put the rook on c8 as well. Yes, Because definitely. there might be a ugly move, but a serious threat, e6, e5. Yeah. B3, ah, so b3, the so he has to move, move back, king f7. And you were right, so his next move will probably be d7, d5. And then he's just fine. Better, apparently. Because white still has this backward pawn on c2. So bishop takes d5. Yeah, pair of bishops, weakness on c2 for white. Yeah, well, the thing is that as long as the knight is there, they're yeah. always forks. <laughs> Ivanchuk is not very good on time. Knight oh, f5. Look at the knight going to f5. Knight f5. Uh, well, black has to keep this bishop on d5. I mean, that's the key key piece in this position. h3, nice intermediate. If you take, black will take on f3. So this way, uh, white's pawn structure is destroyed. Yes, so you can't move the g pawn. h3 is a very nice touch. Mag Magnus Knight must e7, have king this. e7. Uh, he's not even in rush. Ah, uh, rook c3. Was it missed by Magnus Carson? Because now it looks like Funchuk is pretty much in control of the game. Rook f2. Yeah, look now at Magnus's face. Facili can his take. Head. Now Chucky can take. Or or bring the rook first. Rook c8 is a powerful move. Look Attacking c2. Yeah, f3 is already hanging. Are so active. Yeah. Right. And now in some positions it might be that even with exchange of all rooks, black will be winning because too many pawns fall. Mm -hmm, yeah, the g4 pawn is also on light squares. Ah, perfect. Magnus has lost king e1. Chucky goes back to c3. Bishop d4. Ah, oh, that was a blunder. That was a blunder. Rook d2 and e5. Oh. Yeah, so he wants to blunder it now. Yes. I'm not sure if he's winning. Takes and the c2. H well, well, h3, still. it's c2. And if you protect, it's rook c3. Rook c3. Yes. Right, rook c3. He must be still close to a winning position. Must be still close to a winning position. You cannot exchange with white, I believe. And if you go back, then it's rookie three. Ten seconds for the world champion. He takes, takes on c3. He takes on c3. No, this must be just winning. This must be just winning. He calculated that he goes. But yeah, isn't right. This, this is this is a tricky move because he's gonna have f5. He's gonna have f5. King e3. F5 now. Takes. Takes. No, now Black is simply and winning. Magnus resigns. Magnus resigns. What a game. What a game by Vasily Ivanchuk. And he, look, he runs away from the board to check what other guys are playing. What a determined what? person.